All right, man, peace. So, brothers, over the course of the relatively modern history of the NBA, certain players have come into the league who have created paradigm shifts. When Elgin Baylor and Wilt Chamberlain first emerged in the mid to late 50s, early 60s, they were the first two black players who were really allowed to even shoot the basketball. Prior to that, the job of the black player was to just rebound and outlet and defend. Your most prominent Caucasian players were the only players allowed to shoot the basketball. So with Elgin Baylor and Will Chamberlain, there was a bit of resentment there. When Michael Jordan came into the NBA in the early to mid 80s, the overall convention, or at least the perception of how to win in the NBA was that you needed a dominant center, or at least a great big man in order to win. He caused a paradigm shift, which caused a lot of resentment, i.e. the 1985 All-Star game. When Steph Curry came into the league, he was viewed as a player who maybe had the potential to be a little bit bigger version of Steve Nash. He ended up being a player who necessitated a quantum leap in the NBA when it came to offensive schematics. And that also has caused a great deal of resentment as Mr. Andre Iguodala is going to attest to himself. And let me not also forget Mr. Dirk Nowitzki, who may have been arguably the most impactful player in the modern history of the NBA because he pretty much got rid of the hard hat and shovel type power forwards of the 90s, the Charles Oakleys, the Antonio Davises, the Dale Davises, Anthony Mason, Antoine Carr, so on and so forth. Those power forwards who just stayed in the lane and hit anyone who tried to drive to the basket. With Dirk Nowitzki, that pushed that type of power forward pretty much out of the NBA, and Steph Curry has done a lot of that as well. With the way in which he plays, just pulling up from 25 to 30 feet, everything being face-up oriented, that has caused many players who may have been very relevant back even just 10 to 15 years ago to become obsolete. There's very little posting up in the NBA today because of the Steph Curry style of offense. And we just saw LeBron James win his first championship, what, seven years ago? By embracing the post up. Steph Curry has changed a lot of that. And there are players who have been in the league for a while now, who are relatively prominent, who are upset about that, at least according to Andre Iguodala. Who do I believe he's talking about? I believe he's talking about LeBron James and Chris Paul, and most likely Russell Westbrook as well. So they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Let's talk about Warriors forward Andre Iguodala, because man, he is making headlines every day on this book tour. Thank you, Iggy, for making our last week before free agency starts so newsworthy. Well, I think that Iguodala, number one, is trying to make waves because he is trying to advertise a book. But I also believe that he's a very forthright person. Earlier this week on The Breakfast Club, he spoke about how some players in the league aren't huge fans of Steph Curry. He said, When you say that Andre Iguodala is alleging that certain players are not huge fans, well, no player is supposed to be a huge fan of another player. What I think Iguodala actually meant, or what he most likely actually said, is that there are players across the league who don't show the amount of respect to Steph Curry that he deserves based on his accomplishments. You know where I see it the most? The hate on Steph, it's across the league, the other players. Some of the older players hate that he came in and took their shine. They hate it. Now, brothers, you see that? That's why I say that he must be talking about players like LeBron James and Chris Paul. Because in order for Steph Curry to take the shine of a quote-unquote older player, they must also have to have been considered the best player at the position that he currently plays, that being quote-unquote point guard, not literal point guard, because... Most of these guys today are, are what you call combo guards. And or he must have taken the spot of the player who's considered the best player in the league because there was a short span when Steph Curry was considered the best player in the NBA in that 2015-2016 area until LeBron was able to dethrone him in the 2016 finals. So those have to be the two players or the two most prominent players that Iggy's talking about. I also say that he must be talking about Westbrook as well because Westbrook has never shown any level of respect for Steph Curry. Part of it is his competitive drive, and also part of it is just his envy. There's no disrespect to Russell Westbrook. There are things that Russell can do that Steph Curry will never be able to do in his wildest dreams. Just like there are things that Steph can do that Russell Westbrook will never, ever be able to do in his wildest dreams. And sometimes I castigate Steph for his poor decision-making, especially in big spots. He has nothing on the level of ineptitude that Russell Westbrook habitually shows in pivotal moments. Russell Westbrook is one of the worst point guards that I've ever seen in big spots when it comes to decision making. He very clearly is not a point guard, but just to get back to the point, it's very clear to me that when Iggy says some of the older players hate that he came in and took their shine, he's talking about number one, Chris Paul, number two, LeBron James. 
So Iggy says, older players hate on Steph, BS, or real talk? Ooh, real. Ooh. For me. Ooh, all right, why? I've seen it. You can feel it from other players in the league, and, and Matt, you can speak to this as well. When you talk to people about Steph, there's this resentment because he changed the game. I, I really believe that okay, so, so many... why is your sign say 100 then? No, the reason why he's making that gesture is because he's trying to imitate the lack of respect and regard that other prominent players have for Steph Curry when they're asked about him. No, I, I believe it. I'm, okay. I'm for it. I'm always been a fan of him. But go ahead and finish your point, and I'll say my. But but he has changed the way the game is played. Yes. And I think a lot of guys came into the league thinking, "I'm going to grind. I'm going to play defense. I am going to play the way I saw growing up." And Steph has shown that there's a whole different style to the game. Once again, Steph Curry is one of the top five most impactful players in the history of the NBA. Not one of the top five greatest or best players, but one of the top five most impactful. He's up there with Will Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, um, Shaq, players of that caliber, who literally changed the way the league played on offense and defense. When you play that game, you need different pieces to fit around you. And he has made a lot of guys had to either change their own games or they're kind of slid out of the league a little bit with the way things used to be. No, I agree. I, I think, you know, he came in, he's, he's the golden boy. He came in and destroyed record books, won championships, beat LeBron. He's done a Let me say this very quickly. People call Steph Curry the golden boy. When I think of that term golden boy, I think of someone who's had it easy from the very moment that they stepped into the NBA. And nothing could be further from the truth when it comes to Steph Curry. Everyone knows about the difficulties that he was forced to endure, especially his first three or four years in the league. So no, I don't consider him the golden boy. I do think that a lot of the image surrounding Curry and his family pisses off a lot of other players in the league because even if it's subconsciously, he makes them look bad. A lot of things that probably... At least in their mind, he makes them look bad. Let me rewind this back a little bit. No, I agree. I, I think, you know, he came in, he's, he's the golden boy. He came in and destroyed record books, won championships, beat LeBron. He's done a lot of things that probably angered other players and other... It's very obvious to me that Matt Barnes understands that one of those players that Andre's talking about must be LeBron James because he mentioned LeBron. And that's why I don't think he gets the respect he deserves as, as to be obviously the greatest shooter, but one of the greatest players ever to play the game. And I can see... Steph is definitely top 25 greatest players to ever play the game, and that's a conservative estimation. He can't be any lower than 25 to 30. Most likely, he's top 20. Being better from that, not, not to mention the, the, the little light skin thing, and, and people have problems with that. And like I said, he's a, he's a perfect example of what the. There's definitely a subtext of colorism there because I constantly hear a lot of people bring up <laughs> bring up the shade of his skin tone, and they don't understand how weak it makes them look when they're talking about him being quote-unquote light-skinned and that having something to do with his success. I mean, it's just nonsense. The most popular player in the history of the NBA, if not professional sports in America, was a dark-skinned black man by the name, or a dark-skinned so-called black man by the name of Michael Jordan. The NBA needs to be represented as, and, and people don't like that either. So, like, most of the time when people are so good or something so perfect, so to speak, People don't like that, and that's exactly what you get with Steph. This is the category of being on the right or wrong side of history, though, because history is going to remember him as a two-time MVP, the first unanimous MVP, right. as you say, consensus, greatest shooter the game has ever seen. So, I would not quite say the consensus greatest shooter that the game of basketball has ever seen. I think that there's still some debate, at least in my mind, between Steph Curry and Larry Bird, especially due to the fact that Larry Bird was just a bigger man. He could get his shot off easier whether it's in traffic or over a double team in the post, etc. But it's certainly a debate. If I was forced to pick, I'd probably pick Steph because of the, the way in which he's extended the limits of our understanding of how far away a jump shot should be taken <laughs> in a real game. That's people might want to get on board. Well, Matt. Well, I'm not quite sure if they should be concerned with getting on board. If they have their opinion, they have their opinion. My thing is if you have actual substance to your argument or to your perspective, it's always going to win the day anyway. You're always going to have people who have an emotional stance for whatever reason, whether it be envy or what have you. It is what it is. So peace.